their definition of fee simple in the Land Titles Act, or whatever the hell it's called, says that they're a joint tenant in common. But we don't rebut that. So I contact them in advance now and I say, it's my belief I own it in fee simple, according to this definition. And then I said, if you've got a different definition, that's your own problem, because that's within your own act, and your act doesn't apply to me. That's your act, not mine. These are my definitions. If you're claiming otherwise, you've got X amount of days to get back to me, otherwise you agree with me. So start contacting government in advance and start setting these rules before you wind up in court on a misunderstanding that you're a public servant. And that's why you asked them very explicitly and clearly, uh, are we living in an open air prison or a free society? Like, are you a slave? Yeah. Essence. Well, they're, 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 they're through trickery and, you know, uh, and, and really trying to conceal what's going on and uh, fogging everything that's going up just so you well, don't really understand. Clarity. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, look, look at their law books. They've got stuff this thick meant to confuse you. That tells me right away that I want to get, I, I want to limit what I'm saying with them to the least confusing statement possible because everything they do is about generating paperwork that's confusing. So we want to simplify that, use the most simple words we can, and tell them right at the outset, by the way, before I start even speaking in this letter, I want you to know that the definition of every word in my letter is found in Black's Law Dictionary. Or Webster's. Or Webster's. I like to use Black's, it's a good common law dictionary, right? Right? Yeah, you can get into, Bouvier's is a really excellent one if you want to get into law, but... Uh, but if you start speaking in people's common yeah. Yeah. Yep. Then, uh, yep. But just outline which dictionary you want to use then. If you want to use Webster's, use Webster's. It's your life, it's your rights, it's your rules. Use Destiny Street. There you go, yeah, I don't care. In fact, create your new definitions like the government does in the Interpretation Acts. There you go. By the way, when I say this, it really means this. If you really want to confuse well, them, but... What the definition is like, well, since I sent them a notice saying the definition of a free man is anyone that does this, that's the definition I'm using. Yeah, it's whatever definition you want to use, but make sure there's clarity between the parties. Because again, if you go to court, you're going to want facts. And what are facts? Facts are agreement of the parties. This is not a pen unless me and the other parties say it's a pen, otherwise we have a dispute. Okay. To contact government, who do you recommend sending these letters? Well, it depends. What purpose are you, uh, so the question was, when you're contacting them, who do you contact? Exactly. Okay, so what purpose are you contacting them for? About a driver's license? That's good. They're only claiming that you have to follow the Highway Traffic Act. So who's... It's just about the birth certificate, like you were saying. Okay, that, that's, the, that's another matter altogether. I'd contact Vital Statistics. There's a, there's a minister that's in charge for that. Um, <clears throat> And I, I can't remember, um, for the social insurance number, it's Human Resources Canada, which is Diane Finley right now. For the Receiver General, for other purposes that I was doing, that's uh, Rona Ambrose. Uh, there's a bunch of them, but technically look for the minister that's responsible for whatever act you're looking at addressing. Like if they're claiming you need a driver's license, anything to do with MPIC, the roads, anything, that, that all filters up through the Attorney General's office. So you want to be contacting the, uh, the appropriate officer, exactly. If you just start sending stuff off to the lieutenant governor, yeah. you know, just in a big tirade, I mean, that's... Like yeah, you're just going to look like a loose cannon. Yeah, problem. but I will say, when I did have a problem with government, I brought it up with the appropriate minister, and they took no action, and they failed in their duty to do anything about it, then I went next up. I didn't go to the premier, because I don't care about the premier. I went to the guy that appoints the premier. And if you read in their own, uh, their own laws, they'll tell you flat out that the lieutenant governor of Manitoba basically takes the guy who had the, 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 the leader of the party with the most votes and invites him to become the premier. That tells me we're not really picking him. Right. Right? Yeah, right? I agree. Um, uh, sorry, just in follow up to that question, CFS, who would you? Uh, that is Gord McIntosh. We don't contact these guys on a regular basis. I don't know who they all are, eh? <laughs> yeah, Gord McIntosh is in charge of, uh, he's responsible for the CFS Act, which is actually, they're actually a private corporation called All Nations Coordinated Child Family Services Network. That's the real name of them. I've got a copy of their act right here. They're a private... 
Yeah, we had to get a copy from uh, from the Woodsworth Building, right from the corporation's office, where actually they're actually like literally a registered corporation, right in the Woodsworth Building in the company's office, where their motto is like facilitating something something between government and the public or whatever. And it's like, like they're just so it's just it's there. It's like I keep telling people, we've been going through this jungle with a machete for, for a year, you know, for a decade, trying to get to, to where we're going. We get there, and we, and we look right beside us, and we've just been cutting bush through a superhighway the whole time. Right. It's right there. And once you get up to the top and you get talking to some of these guys, which we have, they all know it. It's not like it's a secret, right? But they know 95% of the people more are going to go away and not try to enforce their rights just because they just don't want to deal with it. Well, so that's their job. They just don't understand, they don't want to deal with it. They just prefer just to have their license and pay the odd speeding ticket or just don't drive, right? But everything, everybody is a corporation and everything, all buildings or whatever, corporations. Yeah. Well, and it, it all comes under contract law, right? In the everything common law. Yeah, your common law right to contract. So contract with government at will. Take advantage of programs if you want to. Like, I'm not even saying they're your enemy. They are when they try to force things on you. Then that man becomes my enemy. Like Exactly, something like that, right? Now, we won't even get into that one. I, I'm not a big fan of the whole baby theft kind of thing. I get really personally offended by that. Sorry, I will but uh, no, I, I like to talk about it. We don't have time today, is kind of my meaning on that. Um, so that's, that's the whole point of this all. It's all about your, your demeanor and how you're conducting yourself. And people have to realize that if you want to be a, like, what, what some people call a free man and you want to assume full liability for your actions, be prepared to pay the consequences of your actions. Right? You're free to do whatever you want, but you cannot escape the consequences of your actions. That's a an maxim of law. An eye for an eye. And tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye. So you're, you're more than welcome to go out in the world and do whatever you want in your own private capacity as a free man. But be prepared to answer for it if you harm somebody. Right? So government is not my enemy until they try to force things on me. And that means if I get pulled over and I've got a private plate, I've properly rescinded my contracts with the government. Yeah, they're just trying to pull me over and, and charge me with a traffic offense, and they're, they're the ones, you know, you produce a license where I'm arresting you right now on the spot. And okay? Else yeah, that yeah, that man's not my friend anymore. He's not he's not a public servant. He's now he's now my enemy. Right. He's attacking me. Well, this here's something that I think about free men is that are always peaceful and respectful at all times. You know, you've got to try until it's time to not be respectful. Well, you can run for as far as you can, and then it becomes legally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the best course of action is when you run into that problem, and I say this all the time, is if you have a fee schedule in place, just sit there and enjoy the abuse and smile and say, dude, you just paid for a lifetime of margaritas on a beach by what you did. Ten right? million bucks for every broken rib. Yep. And give, them, and give them notice. I did the thing, too, where I refused to give the guy my name one time. I was just being obstinate, period. Even though I had a fee schedule in place, I just said, no, I said, no. I said, you're not producing a claim. Period. I wasn't even speeding. There was actually no reason for the guy to pull me over at all. I said, I'm not even giving you a name. And that lasted for four days I was in jail. I did not care, right? I'm still enforcing the fee schedule anyways, but I, I'm more than happy to give him a name now. As long as the fee schedule in place, say, yeah, yeah, my name's Dean Clifford. I'm the director of, of this legal person at this contact address. And if you check on the computer, I'm pretty sure there's a fee schedule in place right now that has a... a that has an article in place for the damage you're causing me right now. Just so you're aware, it's costing me this much money. I just told you guys even before we were on camera tonight the story about, uh, again, uh, my, my brother seems to get in as much trouble as I do, even though... Well, you always got to get that in before yeah. it's always best. Yeah, and he, uh, a lot of these confrontations now, if people are saying the right words, are ending with ones like he just had there on Thursday last week where uh, the cop ordered him, ordered him out of the truck because he wouldn't produce a driver's license. And he said, well, he said, sure, that's not a problem, but it's going to cost you 50 grand because I don't do anything for free without a court order. If you get a court order, I'll do it. Otherwise, it's going to cost you 50 grand because I'm charging for it and I don't work for free. The cop says, oh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So he gets out and he stands right where he said he was going to get out and stand. The cop's like, well, no, I need you in the back of my car while I take a statement or whatever, while I write up the paperwork. And he said, no, no, my, our agreement was I was going to stand right here for 50 grand. Thank you. You now owe me 50,000 bucks, by the way. And there's two of you, so that's 100,000 bucks. Say, if you want me in the back of your car, it's going to cost you a million. I said, I'm not going to go willingly. That's going to be against my consent. I'm not going with you. And if you force me, that's going to cost you a million bucks. And the cop just went, ah, I don't care. Just stay there then. You know? 
But as defenders of public peace, they can't also uh, bring arguments against you. Don't get into that kind of argument with them at the side of the road. I'm a defender of the public peace and all that kind of, you're going to go to the loony bin if you start with that kind of stuff, right? I hate to say it, it's, it's probably all valid. It mostly is. If you look in the Criminal Code of Canada... We also, we also have C-3PO uh, trying to start or whatever. So yep. This year can be another topic. Yep. I'm, yeah, oh yeah, another topic for that one. Uh, the Criminal Code of Canada, I can look it up. Uh, the piece, definition of a peace officer in the Criminal Code of Canada, not under another act. The highest station that a cop can hold is a peace officer which is something everybody is. It actually says right in the criminal code, we're all peace officers. That is in there, and I think some couple of you even know that. So they have to come out from every, under every single statute they're under, they have to come out from behind it to achieve the same thing that we're capable of being, which is a peace officer. That's their highest authority. So when they're enforcing a statute against you, they're actually of a lower capacity than they would be if they were just enforcing, uh, if there was a, like a complaint or a breach of the peace made against you. Right? But I always call them public servants. So anyways, that's some of the philosophy about going in there is, you know, yeah, you should be conducting yourself in an honorable manner until your adversary is being dishonorable. But even then, don't fight them. Believe me, they're just going to make you regret that you, you fought back. Or peaceful and respectful at all times. Yep. And they have similar roles as well. Yep. And as long as you've got your fee schedule in place and you have identified yourself, and I'm big on that, but don't, I, don't identify themselves in the way you, they want you to identify yourself. They want you to be a public servant. And you can tell them flat out, and my brother did that uh, when they gave him his ticket uh, there on Thursday. They gave him a ticket for uh, driving without a license because he refused to produce it because there was no claim being made against him, right? So they said, uh, they, they, or no, they, they made him sign a, uh, a warrant, I think, for, uh, to, to appear for the assault charge or something. And so uh, he signed it, Director 4, then a signature, and then all rights reserved right below it. You know, and the two of them, the two, the two of them grabbed that and they ran back to their car and they're, they're both looking at that and they're looking at him. Yeah, and they were not happy about that, eh? It took them a good couple of minutes before they came back and, they're, and then they started demanding ID from them again. Cause yeah. then, because well, they, they realized they're hooped, eh? Very fundamental things that they need in order to obtain a conviction. Yeah, yeah. You got to remove jurisdiction from them to enforce the Highway Traffic Act on you, to tow your vehicle, and the best way to do that is to not have a license at all. It's a big fear thing. People think, oh my God, if I'm driving around with no, no license plate, they're going to tow my car and I'm never going to get it back. I got news for you, okay, from somebody with experience in this matter. If you have a license plate, they are definitely going to tow your vehicle because that gives them the jurisdiction to do it. If there is no plate, they have no jurisdiction to tow your vehicle. None. And we've proven that now. Unless they declare an abandoned vehicle, at which point you take claiming salary. All you have to do is go and get it. Exactly, but, but there's no charge. Just your notice to say, hey, this is my vehicle, if you guys well, ever see it. Do it in advance. That's your, that, exactly. That's your fee schedule you're sending into the government. So that's, we're going to get into that for people to do that so they can start driving with their own license plate. Uh, yeah. And if you were there, you could say, I'm in peaceable possession of it. How can you declare it abandoned? Yeah, that, that would never happen. The one time that it has happened now that one of us did get pulled over their own private plate, we all know the story on that one, they just towed it back to the guy's house. He just put a pl his spare plate on it, was driving it five minutes later. Right? Big deal. But he now had a claim against the city, and we filed the lawsuit in Queen's Bench the next day. And we told him we were going to do that. We want them to know that we mean it from now on when we say things. We're, we're men of our word. Yes. If we tell you you're going to be in Queen's Bench on Monday, we go down, we file Monday. Okay? So the second time, about three weeks after that, uh, they were parked out here in front of the office the one day with, uh, where the Jeep there is there with the sovereign plate you guys have seen on there. Yeah. Um, they sat out here for 45 minutes talking and uh, they ran the plate, called it into head office, uh, and then they drove away. <coughs> they, knew th they knew the second time, don't tow that. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, I don't know. <coughs> But they drove away. Technically speaking, that vehicle had no plate on it. So they should have towed it, By their according system. to their system. Right. But because we'd already given them notice now, there's about four or five of us now that drive with plates like that. And that's actually something else that you can cover at a later date. Yep. Common law jurisdiction like that, where you, where somebody claiming common law jurisdiction can draw authority from. Like if there's a private passenger vehicle clause in Alberta, you can use that in I wouldn't use any statutes. You don't need it. Don't use any statutes to defend yourself in any way. Consideration That's their <coughs> yeah. something to like 
for passage, which turns into commercial transaction. Well, it's, hip it's, it's hypocritical.